Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. I got a radio show. Somebody sent me an email one day, that, you know, kind of a nasty little email. <laughs> you know, I think I said it once before, Steve Harvey trying to be a preacher. Man, I'm so far from being a preacher, man. I can't even tell you. But what I am trying to do is share information. Now, I understand how haters work, and I understand how the devil works. Believe me, I do. You know, sometimes even he, the devil, surprises me at the level and the angles of attack they use. You know, which I go, wow, man, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Ooh, that was pretty slick. I got, got to give you credit on that when you try to get me. But every time you try to get me, I get saved. I get saved every time, man, because, because God got me. God got some angels camped around me. That's what my mom used to always say as a Sunday school teacher. Never really understood it, but, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, but I got it now. He got some angels around me, and angels come in the form sometimes of people, people who pull your coat to this or introduce you to that or reveal some information to you like this. He got them all around me. So, see, having a relationship with God has been beneficial to me, y'all, It's not just that what he gives to me, but what he protects me from. And, you know, some some people wonder, well, if you were God, why he let them people do that to you? No, that's not how it works. See, there's two forces in this world. There's good and there's evil. And if you succumb to good, that's what you become. That's what you do. But everybody don't succumb to good. Some people succumb to evil. Some people's mission is to hate, to destroy, to tear down. And so that force is at work in this world, too. And when that force comes up against me, what God never promised me that I wouldn't see none of that, that I wouldn't see the attacks, that I would not come under fire, that I would not be falsely accused. He didn't say that. Matter of fact, he forewarned me that it would happen. But what he does give me in those moments are moments of comfort and peace, knowing that he's with me. And that no matter what my enemy does to bring me down, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. So come if you want to. Fight if you will. I have a man that has been attacking me since I owned the comedy club in Dallas. He has been on a mission. And then if I don't give him 
five million dollars, he gonna do it. He done done everything, man. He has done everything. Now he done messed around and got himself now claiming in his letters physically ill. And his illnesses and what's befallen his family, he's blaming that on me too. Had Steve Harvey not stressed me out and paid me this money he owed me. Where where, where you coming with this? He just has kept on and on and on. And you know what? He done messed around and got himself sick. He done messed around, man, got himself in some situation. And can I tell you something? It's been going on since 19, uh, maybe 97. He started the attack when I first went on. No, before that. <laughs> Probably 95. He started the attacks in 95. Every now and then. He done got six lawyers. All the lawyers done dropped the case after they come in and they discover the fact. But he's steady trying. But it's the angels that's around. And I forewarned him several times, man. Hey, man, if I was you, I'd go ahead on. Because what I'm not going to do is bend. Because, see, you cannot break me because I happen to be a soldier for Christ. I happen to be an imperfect soldier for Christ. There's nothing, man. There's nothing. And, oh, oh, and it ain't like a bunch of people that tried now. Oh, y'all been on YouTube. Y'all been on the internet. Oh, they done tried. Oh, they done put some dirt on me, man. That ain't true. But if you keep looking at me, though, and I am not the prize, but if you put your eyes on God, it's where you go. But if you look at me, he's covered me through it all. And that's been the importance of the relationship I form with God, is that I know that I'm under his wings, that I'm ever under his ever-loving protection that he got me. And I just wanted to share that with you, that if you got, if you're looking for some protection, if, you, if you're looking for a way to have the strength to get through what you're going through, get some God, man. If, 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 if you want a way out, get some God, man. If you've been gangbanging and you're sick of gangbanging, get you some God, man. If you're tired of being on drugs and you're tired of drinking, get you some God, man. If you're tired of being, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, get you some God, man. I'm just telling you now, if you're trying to make your dreams come true and it look like you ain't going to make it and you still believe that that's for you, get you some God, man. If you're setting a new goal, dream, or aspiration and you're trying to get there and you're going to start out today, get you some God, man. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. See, it's real what I'm saying, man. I ain't no fake dude with it. You understand? I'm just telling you real. Get you some God, man, and be patient. Have faith. Believe. Don't doubt. But Lord have mercy, get ready to work your tail off. Did you hear me? Get you some faith. Believe. Don't doubt. And get ready to work your tail off. God can't bless him. You see, a lot a lot of times we go to God asking for prayers and stuff, but we go to him and we don't give nothing, God nothing to bless. We want blessings, but we don't give him nothing to bless. You make one step, he'll make two. You start, he'll finish. You come, he'll go. You dream it, he'll build. it. You start it, he'll finish. See, you see, you trying everything your way. I'm going to go to court. I had a conversation with a man yesterday. Just sitting, just called me, man, and was just talking about, but Steve, you know, man, I, 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 this dude been owing me $2,300 for four years. I just asked him, have you survived the four without the $2,300? Yeah, man. How much you think you'd have spent trying to get to $2,300? Just a few hundred. Now, let me ask you something. Do you have a few hundred more to try to get this 2,300 that you've been trying to get for four years? Yeah, I could do that. But do you want to, man? Do you have the time to dedicate four more of your years to try to get 2,300? But, Steve, I'm out of work right now. I fell on some hard times. I could use that money. And I've been praying to God to help me. Yeah, you've been praying to God to help you. God probably got something way greater for you. But you got to let go of your own thinking and let God have his way. You understand? You feel me? 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do I have everybody's attention? Welcome to today. If you are ending your day or starting your day, welcome to the transitional point of your day. If you're just getting off work, if you're about to go to work, whatever it is, welcome to today. You do realize you don't have to be here. I thank God that I'm here. How about you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve Harvey Morning Show with Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Kill Space, better known as Junior, the legend nephew Tommy. Junior, what's on your mind? <laughs> uh, let me ask you something. You know, I know you're not real tech savvy. Uh-huh. I understand that, uh, but I mm-hmm. thought I just want to ask you. Could you be able to date in today's world on an app? Could you just date on an app? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that no, swipe. Well, I've seen time. that swipe right go bad so many times. <laughs> so many swipe right. Yeah. You know, I was just realizing what these filters are, uh, and they got these filters, man. And I'm telling you, man, that take your face and fix it for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, make it up, eyes, everything. Mm. And there are a lot of people online now who are exposing the filtered face and they real face. Yeah. And I mean, man, it's it's shocking. So no, I kind of, I mean, I would have to try it because it's so prevalent today. Yeah. But to be honest, Junior, I kind of like it the old way, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna see you somewhere, you know. <laughs> Hard to have a filter on at the grocery store. Yeah. Hard to have that filter on in the airport. I mean, filters don't travel, though. Yeah. They just for they that don't iPhone. Travel. They don't, they don't travel. Yeah. You know, now if you can wear the filter, if filter was an outfit. <laughs> filter was an outfit. Yeah, if filter was an outfit. Like if they had right. a filter outfit store, that's what I'm going to create. I'm going to yeah. create a store in the mall called the Filter Fit. <laughs> and you come in here and put these filters on and you can wear it out. You know, kind of like that black ass mask Kanye be wearing with it. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can make it in a filter. Slide this on your face and this who you look like. <laughs> See, Kanye got the right idea. And since yeah. we're talking about Kanye and we're talking about dating on a separate subject, okay. yeah. let me say this Pull right here. And I don't normally get into gossip. So I want to take this out to gossip. This is just my opinion. And I'm not discussing the man's marriage because I don't want nobody discussing mine. Mm -hmm. I will say this, though. I've looked at this girl Kanye got, Mm -hmm. and I've looked at Kim. Mm -hmm. Uh, Me personally, I would be back at the house working (laughs) through some things. (laughs) I'm just saying. I'd go back to the house and work through some things. Yeah. Mm. I'm not fitting to, that's not fitting to be the trade. Well, they say they're in an open relationship, him and the new girl. <laughs> they're in an open relationship. Yeah. You got to be with Kanye. <laughs> well, hell, you think you finna get in with him? All right, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, <laughs> nephew Tommy and run that prank back right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now to start your morning off with Run That Prank Back and the nephew. What you got, Neff? This right here is Super Bowl party. Let's go, Keto. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Gerard. Yeah, this is him. Who's calling? Hey, this is this is Curtis, man. I'm um uh, I'm one of your neighbors in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm about three, I think about three streets over from you. Uh, I'm reaching out to you, man. I know the Super Bowl coming up. Are you... uh? Are you are you planning on throwing your your annual Super Bowl party this year? Man, how you get? You said you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, I live in the neighborhood. I'm 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 three streets over from you. Oh, okay. Yeah, how'd you hear about the Super Bowl party, man? I, I mean, I mean, everybody knows about it. I mean, you know, it's 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 pretty big every year. You got, you know, I mean, it's 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 cars everywhere. I mean, you guys be be rocking for uh, all through the night on Super Bowl night. So I, I'm I'm calling to see if are you are you throwing it this year? Um. Yes, and you, I do it every year, man. I do it every year. All the neighbors come over. Everybody comes over. We have a good time. So, yeah, we're going to be doing it again this year. Why? What's up? Okay, so here, here's what I want to tell you, man. Every year, your party too loud. 
and it's people parking all in front of other people's houses. I'm three streets over. It's people parking in my driveway to get to your house. And to be honest with you, this is too loud, and I'm I'm just telling you this year, if that is loud this year, I'm calling the police this year. Man, this is what you really called me for? You really called me to threaten me to tell me you're going to call the police to shut down my party, bro? Yeah, I mean, what kind of hate is that? Bro? Too loud, man. Man, everybody in the everybody in the neighborhood come to my party, man. No, so ain't no everybody in the, the neighborhood problem? don't come because I damn sure ain't been there. That's because you ain't get an invite. You damn you, right. You, you damn right. Because you a hater. Because no you a hater. That's party. why you ain't get no invite. You Say a what? hater. That, I said you're I'm, a hater. That's why you I'm not get no. no I ain't no hater. I'm just telling you your stuff is out of control, man. man you got to tone it. You got to get control of your party. You don't have control of it. Man, you telling me how to control my control your mouth for starters. Let's start right there. All right, you ain't calling no <laughs> police. You ain't doing none of that. We ain't doing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, hold on. You ain't telling me what I'm not gonna do. All right, I just you the you. one. You the you the one throwing you. the loud ass party. You the one got people parking in people's driveway. And yeah, that's right. If it happens that's this right. year, I'm calling the police. You ain't calling nobody. You ain't calling a oh. damn person. I'm gonna tell you okay. that right now. Okay, so, I'm so how you. you finna stop me? How you finna stop me from making sure I got peace at, at, on, on my street at my house? I'm gonna stop you with a size twelve, right up your. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Hey, dude, I, 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 I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you again. Control your party. Get the noise level where it ain't disturbing I'm, everybody in the neighborhood, and stop people from parking in people's driveway. And I'm gonna tell you again. I'm about to have a party with my size twelve right up in your. How okay. about that? So, hey, dude, Come it, it, it is what it is, then. It is what Come it is. Get it. Look for the police to be at your party, all right? Uh-uh, Case no, closed. No, uh-uh. Case closed. Look for, the people to, look for the police to be at your damn party, because evidently you don't respect your neighbors is what it is. No, I, you know what? I do respect my neighbors, because all the neighbors in the neighborhood come except for you, because we already know you're on, the, you're on that list. Yet I hate a neighbor that be calling tow trucks and, you know, complaining about leaves and people's yard and all of that. You don't even know I me. know you. I know exactly who you are. That's why you never got an invite to the party, because you're a hater. You do not even know me, dude. You's a buster. You's a okay. hater. Okay. All right. All right. I'm the why. buster, but I'm going to be the buster that's calling the popos to be over there on Sunday. L- listen to you. You, you, you snitch. Snitching. S-N-I-T-C-H-I-N. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that's not snitching. No. Yes, it is. It's controlling yes, it is. the atmosphere and stopping it from being out of control. You the are out of control. Out of control. Especially, no, let me not. ask you something. So, so you think people that's going to your party ought to be able to park in my driveway? Listen, man, I, I, I'm going to be real with you. I'm sorry if anybody may have parked in your driveway. But it ain't nothing for you to just knock on the door and say, hey, excuse me, you know, I'm trying to get out, you know, whatever, whatever. I'll make sure I put it on, on the flyer that. We don't want people blocking driveways, but, you know, obviously it happened, and I apologize for that, but that's no reason for you to be going all extra crazy and going the extra mile talking about, I'm calling the police. You ain't calling nobody, man. Shut up. That right there is what's wrong with black people today. Instead of coming to me like a man, you coming to me like a coward. Instead of coming to me like a man and saying, listen, man, I'm coming like you know, a coward. because the first thing you're talking about, oh, I'm going to call the police. And then when the police come and beat your black ass up, you're going to be on the other line complaining, talking about, oh, no, what is this, this to me? You want to be suing and doing this and that. Don't you know that's how you get f***ed up, man? So as black people, we got to learn how to stick together and come together. If you want to come to the party, it sounds like you a silent hater on the low, for real. Like, you really want to come to the party. But because you're the only person in the neighborhood that hasn't been invited, now you're talking about calling the police. I know exactly who you are. Who am I? You that dude that live up two, three streets over, and you drive that, that red pickup truck with the flannel shirts and all of that. You're the only person in the hood driving a red pickup truck in flannel. What's wrong with you, man? That's why you ain't getting no invite. And on top of that, all those dogs you got running around in your backyard, you need to clean them up. They'd be back there and 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 everything. And then the other neighbors can't even have barbecues because your big rusty ass dogs running around. You got a nerve to be talking about you calling the police when we need to be calling the city on you. All that trash and you got in front of your house, man. Get out of here. I'm going to call the cops on you right now. Well, if you ain't the wearing the flannel shirts and with the red pickup truck and the dogs running around with all in the front yard and the backyard and all over the place, who the are you then? Tell me. 
say no more. I'm going to tell you who I am. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your just got pranked by your next door neighbor, Brian. That's who I am. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, now I'm definitely going to kick you in his for <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, man. I got one more thing. I, you got to tell me what's the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. Man, you already know it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> I love me. Thank you, nephew. Coming up uh, next, it is Ask the CLO with Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Nelly is apologizing for his sex video. This video was leaked on his IG story. And in other entertainment news, Sherry Shepard is named as new permanent guest host of the Wendy Williams Show. Wow. Come on, Shep! Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Go on, girl. Mm-hmm. He did. Yeah. Plus, we're going to tell you about the Oscar nominees and also the snubs. Uh, We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO. Steve Harvey is our chief love officer, ready and waiting for your love questions. Zena in Harlem writes, my boyfriend and I want to move in together, but his credit isn't as good as mine. He wants me to get approved for the loan, and he's going to do his part to pay the mortgage. He's a good man, but he's a little immature at times. Are we making a big mistake buying a home? Should we rent first and test the water? Jeez. First of all, is she married? No, it's their boyfriend. No. This boyfriend stuff can walk out the door and leave you holding the bag. Paperwork keeps you from walking out the door leaving anybody holding the bag. You can leave, but you're going to have to leave the bag. So, young lady, I would not recommend you going into such an obligation with the person that you are calling immature with bad credit. He got bad credit because he won't pay his bill. Now, I've had bad credit, so I understand. Sometimes you have to make a decision about survival. You can't have be held accountable for the things you did when you were in survival mode. I understand that better than anybody. I'm not passing judgment. But if you know these things going in, it should cause for a moment of pause. Okay. What's the rush? Well, should they get an apartment? And she answered house? her own question. Should they rent first and test the water? I mean, that I think you should since this is what you've made up in your mind to do. I would love to tell you if I had a daughter to wait, but, well, you know. Mm-hmm. It's worked yeah. for me so far, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know how long I can hold it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, Zena. Hold up. Hold up, Zena. And the, and the All right. Uh, Yvonne in Tennessee uh, says, I'm a 39-year-old woman in a relationship with a 40-year-old man that loves to work out. I'm in good shape because I'm a dancer, but I hate working out. He eats, breathes, and sleeps fitness and healthy living. He makes a big deal out of my cheat day, and I'm sick of him. How do I get him to stop this? Oh. Uh. Uh, don't sleep with him before the cheat day and don't sleep with him after the cheat day if he brings up the cheat day. <laughs> That'll cut oh. all that and mess that, out. Oh, it will. You know, you a dancer. You got to be in good shape. That ain't what you want to do. He makes a deal out your uh, out of your cheat One day. Cheat That's him. <laughs> I live how much, for the cheat day. How much yeah. money do he make? Oh. See all this? You fine and chisel. How much money you making? So, uh, you know, if you ain't bringing in no huge chunks of cash and me having this cheat meal is destroying the huge chunk of cash, then please stop talking to me about this cheat day. Because I've already ordered the cobbler. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cancel it, huh? <laughs> no, I'm going to pay, put 50% down on the pan of it. Peach Cobbler <laughs> Cafe, it's coming. <laughs> they got more than four peaches in that dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got some peaches in there, boy. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to Quinn in Hampton, Virginia. Quinn says, my boyfriend and I were best friends for 11 years before we started dating, and he gets confused about our relationship, and he overshares. 
I don't need to know if he thinks a woman wants him or if he slept with a woman that passes by. He says he just keeps it, he's just keeping it 100 with me. Is honesty the best policy? What I tell y'all about this? Mm. We going into two things. Y'all was best friends for 11 years. Now y'all sleeping together. So much for he, you can be best friends. Secondly, is honesty the best policy? Hell no, it ain't. It ain't ever. It damn honesty is ninety percent not good. Not, not gonna even work out in your favor. Ninety percent. Ninety percent. That is pretty high, Steve. That's a pretty high ass number. Okay, 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 ladies, let's do it. Let me show you a sample right here. Just ask me any question. Let's imagine we're in a relationship. Just ask me any question. Any question at all. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, I like your orange sweatshirt today. Where'd you get that? Uh -oh. Now, where did I get it? I ordered it online at Amazon. Now, where did I really get it from? Down at Dick's Sporting Goods, where the fine chick work at. <laughs> Why can't now, you just leave that part yeah. out and just say Dick Sporting see, see right Goods? There. See right there. See right there. See right yeah, there. That's why. Right I did. There. See, that I omission have. of information yeah. is yeah. considered a lie by y'all. Yes. Oh, yeah. Come the on, boy. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So now, oh, next question. See how this go? What? <laughs> okay. Ask him one, Tommy. Go ahead. No, come on, Carl. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to go to dinner tonight? Mm. Out at a restaurant? Which room? Hey, you know, why don't we, why don't we eat here tonight? Okay. You That's know. what you want to do. You want me to cook? Do I do want you to cook? No, oh, Shirley. No, Shirley, I don't want you to cook. Matter of fact, <laughs> no, let's go on and go out. Sure and we'll go on out to that favorite restaurant of yours. <laughs> the one that when you not there, I've had dinner with my previous girlfriend at. And the maitre d know me, and uh, I don't want him to confuse you with her. Y'all, you want that truth? <gasps> I think that's over information. Yeah. That's what I feel. But if truth. we don't tell it, it's, it's a lie. Truth. A lie it's is truth. But you, I'm talking I'm about the lying. lying. Just yeah. a full blown lying. That's I think you should be honest. Everything. No. Like this Lying works, we not being I'm honest. Sorry. I'm telling y'all, you got to lie. <laughs> y'all don't yes. like it, but I'm telling you, you it's have to lie. You want to be in a relationship. Shut up, Tom. You want to be in a relationship, you're going to have to lie. All right. From a man's perspective, tell me, I want to hear your question. So, Steve, as, as yeah. like if I was a woman. Uh, just, oh, okay. Yeah, I want to hear All right. Uh, Go for it. Uh and watch how fast what is, I lie. Oh, I got one, too. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is this remote control for somebody's garage in your glove compartment? What, 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 is, what is that? Yeah, that's not a remote control. Oh, now I'm stupid. What is that? I bought a radio I bought a Radio Shack car, and that controls the little car. That's how you turn it on. Because the car ride, and it go up and down. It's a remote control to a car. Where the car is, I lost the car. So why are you keeping Next the question. remote then? If you lost the car? In, ca in case I find the car. Oh, lost the what car. did you last okay. have the car? Oh, I ain't seen that car since. Here come another lie. This Ooh, I ain't seen that car since about uh, about Not six who? months. Not about six months since Lying I saw that car. Steve, you're since I saw that liar. car. That's what he said Lying. the last time. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, we're moving on from all these lies. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Nelly has apologized for a sex video of him receiving oral sex, which somehow got posted on his social media page. And he says the old clip was never meant to see the light of day. Uh, Nelly has been trending on Twitter after his IG story briefly included an uncensored video of a woman uh, performing oral sex on him. The video was quickly deleted, but not before people were able to capture screen recordings and repost it. Uh, however, some people Damn. on social media were posting comments, and uh, mm, let's just say, uh, we'll put it this way, they were body shaming Nelly. 
Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Nelly. <laughs> Nelly was anyway. jelly. Yeah, yeah. He was oh, jelly. Oh. <laughs> what, Junior? <laughs> underlay, underlay. <laughs> <laughs> underlay, underlay, mama, ee ya, ee ya, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so how did this happen? You People want to know how did the video leak happen? Well, according to TMZ, Nelly may have been hacked because his team also said they're investigating a breach and are concerned more of Nelly's private content may also end up online, including financial information, personal documents, and passwords. Nelly released a statement, I sincerely apologize to the young lady and her family. This is unwanted publicity for her slash them. This was an old video that was private and never meant to go public. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure he's right about that. Oh, yeah. He's a good dude, man. He's just a good ass. I like that. Yeah, man. Ooh, you know. But the comments, they killing him. <laughs> oh, the body goodness. shaming comment. Oh, terrible. terrible. What they say, Carl? Just she can't, yeah. <laughs> Figure it it's, out. It's oh, my God. Call, call a text to me. What they say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll screenshot them to you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys accidentally ever sent like a nude photo to someone nope. by mistake nope. or? No. Nope. That's a good thing. That's nope. good. Accidentally. Because mm-hmm. some people do. Some people do it. It's clearly. That button, Nelly. sin, you need to know what sin means. Sin ain't yeah. no joke. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. Sin. My arm not look long at enough. To... Huh? <laughs> really? I was just saying, my arm not long enough. Really? So they won't be body shaming uh-huh, you. That's huh? what he's trying. Uh-huh. Can't get everything in the frame, so I just. <laughs> <laughs> I send it Hanging to you. Nelly. I send it to you in section. <laughs> not multiple posts. It's a sequel. He's a, yeah. Here's you the first to get, one. You had, to, you had to get the screenshots and put them together. <laughs> and, then, and then when you put it together, you go, woo, all right now. All right. In other entertainment news, uh, Oscar nominations are out. Best Picture, King Richard. Best Actor, Will Smith. Also, Denzel for Macbeth. We got that going. Mm -hmm. Best Supporting Actress. I love her. She's she's such a great actress. Anjanou Ellis for King Richard as well. Yes, she can Um, act. mm -hmm, That woman, yeah. King Richard, did I see that? With Will Smith? Mm-hmm. Will Anderson, Smith, Serena, King Williams. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I was her, thinking medieval. Dad. My bad. Yeah. No, but Denzel's is you know Mc Macbeth. Ford, Macbeth. Is, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tommy. I don't even. Who know is that a bad? No, no, he's a beast now. Uh, oh, so I Denzel. know everybody. I know Denzel, everybody clearly. know Will. Will did his thing, but the the goat is clowning oh, in God. Macbeth. Is he? Yeah. Trust me, Denzel. What is, is not Macbeth playing. about, Tommy? I didn't forgot. A lady named oh, okay. Beth. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, you're yeah, the somebody. theater guy on this show, Tommy. I mean, but at least he forgot. I never knew. You like you could have told me it was about these two white girls that was going through the forest for a picnic. Okay, ask him again. Ask him again, Steve. Tommy, what is Macbeth about? Oh God. Jesus. Ask me. Oh, ask the, me what it's witches, about. Hey, um, what is Macbeth about? In England? Oh, what Macbeth? Yeah, what's yeah. Macbeth about? Oh, oh. Uh, it's a uh, uh, back in a uh, uh, Shakespearean times. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a family, uh, uh, the Stuarts, and they had uh, two kids. Uh, one of the kids' name was Beth, and the other one was MacArthur. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay, and they had got together and was traveling, going to see. Uh, they was on some horses going through the forest, Sherwood Forest. Uh, and they uh-huh. was going through there to see, uh, you know, you know, one of their uh, peoples. And so <laughs> what it, what happened was after they got over there, the horse kind of went crazy. They were running through the forest, you know. Mm-hmm. And so then right after that, uh, you know, that's when they started calling it uh, Macbeth. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. the horse okay. had trampled both of them and you didn't know who was who, so the turned into it Macbeth. It was tragic. That was tragic. Uh, it was, that, was, that was a tragedy part of it. It was Macbeth. Wow. They got stomped by the horse in the Sherwood Forest. Yeah, check it out. 
Okay, you want the you want the real thing now? Yeah, <laughs> yes. It has, actor. It has something to do with witches and stuff. So you oh, got God. you got three witches that tell Macbeth that he witches. is going to be three witches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, W. I got my W's right that time. You three got to be witches. lying to me. This is about some witches. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these witches. Man, there ain't no way in hell you could have told that to me. <laughs> Three I'm witches tell me better that he's gonna be the, that he gonna be the king of Scotland, and um, his that wife was and Kurt. That <laughs> <laughs> won hey, the Oscar right. for that role. You are absolutely uh-huh. right. <laughs> you won the right. Oscar too. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> we ain't never anyway, he winds up killing the king to be king. Mm. Uh, okay. Oh. Anyway, hey, Jennifer General Hudson. Macbeth. Hey dog, yeah. the life wasn't no king. Oh, okay. We we got to move along. I was going to tell you Jennifer did he, Hudson what did, did not get nominated for uh, Respect playing Aretha yeah. Franklin. All right. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have some trending <laughs> betting and gambling news right after this. That's what I do, baby. Let's go. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve Harvey Nation, listen up. We've got a brand new sweepstakes this week. You can enter the Steve Harvey Morning Show Silk Sonic Vegas Flyaway for your chance to win an evening with Silk Sonic. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack at Las Vegas' Dolby Live Theater. One lucky person and their guest will receive round-trip airfare to Las Vegas, two nights hotel, accommodations at the Park MGM, and two tickets to an evening with Silk Sonic. I want to go. I want to go. Enter and get rules. I know, right? Let's go. Enter and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. That is steveharveyfm.com for all your information. What a great show that's Lucky for you. That's what I like. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and here we go, uh, Steve. In trending gambling news, we have two stories to get to pretty quickly. For an elderly nun, first an elderly nun, she's 80 years old, Sister Mary Margaret Cruper was sentenced earlier this week to one year in federal prison for wire fraud, money laundering, and uh, she was ordered to pay over $800,000 in restitution to the St. James Catholic School in California. Prosecutors said from 2008 to 2018, Sister Mary used the tuition money to pay for large gambling expenses incurred at casinos and uh, certain credit card charges. Sister Mary Cruper said, quote, I have sinned. And so have I. <laughs> mm. Ooh, Sister Mary. <laughs> oh, Sister, on, Sister Mary. Mary. Oh, this was helpful. <laughs> what was you playing? <laughs> That's your Call question. me. You got 800 grand. Yeah. Call me. <laughs> Man, well, girl, we could have been and flipped this. Uh, <laughs> you took your then, stupid um, ass to the casino. Now you 80 fitting to go to prison. That's crazy. As a nun. Y'all fall mm. short. I have Who said. go to prison as a nun? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she can help. Mm. All right. And then um, uh, this story also out of Vegas. A tourist won $229,000. That was a jackpot in Vegas. This was on a slot machine, since you wanted to know what was uh, Sister Mary playing. This person won on a slot machine at the Treasure Island Hotel and Casino, but he didn't know it because the slot machine experienced a malfunction. The Nevada Gambling uh, Gaming Control Board launched an investigation looking through hours and hours of camera and surveillance footage, <laughs> And three weeks later, they tracked down Robert Taylor, who was back home in Arizona, to give him his jackpot. Wow, so, that's pretty good. Yeah. Right Whoa. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's cool right there. Yeah, that happened now. never heard now. Vegas give some money back. That, that happened now. 30 years mean? ago? No, sir. Yeah. A lot of paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good all right, man. coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to check Steve's voicemail, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now to check Steve's voicemail. If you would like to leave Steve a voicemail, and I know you do, call him, 877-29-STEVE. You could hear your message on the air with us. Steve, you ready? Yes, ma'am. This one's from Solomon. Wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, thank you. This one. <laughs> yeah, feign that excitement, why don't yeah. you? <laughs> All right, uh, this one's from Solomon uh, in Richmond, Virginia. Hey, Steve. This is King Solomon of Richmond, Virginia. And... Y'all doing a wonderful job, but this is for Tommy this morning. Tommy, God has blessed you with such a powerful gift that people like myself and others listen faithfully because we enjoy 
the talent that you have. I can't tell you how to market yourself. That's strictly your prerogative. But I think if you would switch from calling yourself stupid and calling yourself fun, it opens up other possibilities in the minds and the hearts of people. Because when you're selling a show, I don't want to come see stupid. I want to have fun. And I think it's a different recipe that perhaps could increase the appeal in the minds of people. We're already going through things in life. COVID, divorces, breakups, bankruptcy, whatever. So the word stupid is kind of a cousin to those negative thinking. So, hey, you give fun. And that's what we need. We need more fun. And Steve and you all really give this, give it to us. So thank you very much for listening to this call, and God bless. Hey, man. So what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to have this, Tommy, or you want to let me have this? I'll let you talk to King Solomon. Go ahead. Well, let me tell you, first of all, hey, King Solomon, first of all, we're not finna call you that. I think you need to market yourself different. Because yeah. I'm not finna call you King Solomon. We don't know yeah. who you is. Yeah. Now, secondly, what you're not finna do is come and take our stupid from us on this show. He, he ours. Now, and the reason he markets himself coming to town, stupid is coming to town because it's a unique to the way he phrases it. Black people don't go nowhere for fun. <laughs> Come on down, let's have some fun. Yeah. Tommy fun. is black. We not going nowhere to have fun. Uh-huh. We coming down here to tear your mouth out uh-huh. and we gonna be ignorant. We not, we not over here to have fun. <laughs> now, I that think you need to remarket your damn self. <laughs> You call black people and tell them your ass is King Solomon. We don't know you. Anybody finna call you king and then you got a biblical name, Solomon, like you wear the finest robes of anyone ever be clad in all the biblical nature. Nobody know you, man. You don't call in here, man, talking to my nephew about his stupidity. That's his. And you're not finna take that from us, Solomon. And I really think your last name is probably Salmon. You just trying to give it a more regal name right here. King Salmon? Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's whack. Yeah. So uh, be stupid, uh, Tommy. Uh, be stupid. Steve. What, He's uh, with stupid. us. He's stupid. Tell yeah. Solomon is too. Tell <laughs> Solomon you ought to see Tommy check for being stupid. Bet your ass will change your ass. Yeah, <laughs> see what you're there talking about what he need to change. If you saw what this boy was making off this ignorant ass mess right here, <laughs> uh, I'm calling here checking him, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to try to take yeah. our stupid from us. Like, you got a better know. idea. Oh, I guess King Solomon is just raking in the damn money. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ken Salmon is his real name. <laughs> Ken he gonna Salmon. He's going to try to come up with King Salmon. Man, I'm not going to do that with you, man. Thank That's you for calling, dog. Solomon Northup was what? 12 All right, years if later. you want to talk to Steve, call him 877-29-STEVE. Call in here criticizing my nephew, dog. I can talk about him, but can't nobody else talk about his name. That's, That's how right. it goes. Coming up, uh, stupid. Yeah, yo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> King <laughs> Solomon. <laughs> coming up. All right, coming up next, nephew with the prank phone call right after this. And it's stupid. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject is my grandson's girlfriend jumped me. My grandson's what? girlfriend jumped me. What? Oh, we'll get into that. See what that's all about in just a bit. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. Uh, but right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Is it going to be Well, stupid? after that's our my... last break, and oh, listening to Uncle know. Steve voicemail, <laughs> King Solomon told me I need to be fun instead of I wish stupid. I don't, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> be stupid. You be stupid. Do, do, do you okay. stupid. Don't. Don't yeah, change what you've been doing. Look what it got you. Thank you, man. Right. Okay. Well, where you at in life? He ain't even seen the chateau. 
you're winning at, at all. That's stupid when the hate built begins. that. Well, he came. He came in here downgrading my stupid though. Like it. Aww, was, you see, like it was Kong, something. You know how sensitive Tommy is. He, he talking about I need to be fun instead of stupid. And it just... will be fun. I stopped talking to you. <laughs> what can I tell All right, you something Cat Dog, let's you... do this. Now, <laughs> the, the Run That Prank Back was the Super Bowl party. That was Run That Prank Back. This right here mm-hmm. is Super Bowl trip. Super Bowl trip. And I'm sorry to say this. You know what? I'm not. I'm not sorry to say this. It's been to be straight stupid. Yeah. Let's go, Cat Dog. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a Martina please. Oh, she's not in right at the moment. Can I take a message or something I can help you with? Uh, actually, I'm uh, giving a call to make sure I'm uh, double-checking on confirmation for Mr. and Mrs. No, man, no. Uh, that may be a mistake because she's going by herself. I'm not oh. going, so that just should be, should, that should be Mrs. That's all. Oh, okay. All right, well, I, t- I tell you what. We have we have her schedule. We wanted to make sure we gave the confirmation and, uh, you know, with a big weekend like this, we're double-checking and making sure everybody's actually coming and getting their grooms because you know you're subject to get charged for it. And we definitely have the honeymoon suite waiting on her. Oh, oh honeymoon suite? Man, we've been married 17 years. What you talking about, honeymoon suite? Well, we got you. You, you, um, you say Mr. and Mrs. What's the name on that? Miss Martina. Is that right? Yeah, that's my wife, yeah. All right, and we've got Tony as well. Who the, what, who the is Tony? My name is Vernon. Say what now? My name is Vernon. Who the hell is Tony? So I'm, I'm wow. We we have we're this is I think uh, I got the wrong one. I think y'all got the wrong one, man. Okay, did did you guys make reservations here at the hotel and for the Super Bowl weekend? My wife is going to this weekend to be with her sick auntie. That's what she told me. Now I don't know nothing about no and those, but you know what? Yeah, keep talking to me. Yeah, okay, player, keep talking to me because uh, this is getting real interesting right here. She's coming to d- for the, well, to the I, I, have, I have I have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Martina and Tony d- are coming. We have the uh, honeymoon suite here for the Super Bowl weekend. Checking in tomorrow and checking out on Monday. Oh no, you know what? This is the d- right here because see, like I got to she told me she was going to see her sick auntie, and I told her, "Cool, I paid for the damn ticket myself. I got my tax return back, and I paid for it my damn self, so she can go out there." And you telling me this half of the made reservations and d- sir, 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 so the just, let's, 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 I mean, what the hell? I'm, it, no, uh-uh. Uh, 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 Victor, Victor, what's your name again? My name is Vernon. Okay, Mr. Vernon, sir. I, I, first of all, I do apologize. I'm just a, you know, I, I'm hell. a work here in, in, in the uh, reservations, and basically they just got us calling because it's a big weekend, and, you know, if you if you don't come in, you, your, your card will definitely get charged. Man, so they got us double checked. You know what? Well, oh. Y'all better not charge nothing to my card. Don't, don't charge Matter of fact, I want to cancel this reservation. She can and fall back in as far as I'm concerned. This is the let her walk her up in here right now. Let her walk her up in here right now because see, this is this. Is okay, crazy. sir. Sl- let's let's just slow. Let's slow down a minute. Let's slow down. Maybe there's just a mistake here. I mean, uh, no, man. Uh, uh-uh. uh. The, the honeymoon suite at the. No wonder she told. No wonder I'm like she told me she needed two hundred dollars for them hotel. Me for the hotel room. Yeah, well, actually, it's uh. Well, they must be splitting in here. It's 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 about four hundred something a night for this room. Excuse me. She didn't pay that much for my damn wedding ring. Uh, uh, wow. Okay. Well, I tell you what, sir. I, is there any way I can I can call back and speak to Martina so you I can? I never in life call back to this. Okay. Because see, if you call back here talking about this, because see, I don't even normally answer this phone. Okay. This is her phone. She went to go run an errand for me. And but don't you never call this phone back again because see, she ain't coming to. Not this lifetime, she's not. But uh, I, I, you know what? I want to thank you though. I appreciate you letting me in on what was up. Yeah. Knew it. Okay. Okay. Mr. Vernon, can you slow down some, man? Hang on. Okay. Now listen. What I have to do is I have to talk to the person that made the reservation in order to cancel it. No, but you I can definitely talk to need me. to speak to you, me. You can cancel this right now. But I need to hear that from Miss Martina okay. that it's canceled. Trust me. When she get back, she's gonna be able to talk to you. You can cancel it now. I'm telling you now. Cancel it. It ain't gonna be no honeymoon. Okay. We've been married for 17 years. We got four kids, and I'm sitting back here. And no, cancel it now. I'm telling you to cancel it. I cannot cancel it without speaking to her. I tell you what, you, you, your best bet is to cancel that because if you put a charge on it, I'm going to drive to and find Joe. What's your name? Excuse me? What's your name? I'm Brian, sir. Brian, if there's one charge on my critical, I will find you. Okay, sir, well, let me find Martin, you. Do you have Tony's number where I can call him and maybe. Man, you know what? You know what? I will have Tony's number in a minute because I got her 
phone numbers, go through it and find it because this is some <laughs> and she gonna be living with Tony. So if you call back here, you're not gonna get her because she gonna be over there with that. Okay, sir. Now there's one more person that's on the that's scheduled on the room. What? A, a, one more person? What are they doing? A threesome? Uh, I'm not sure. Now I got another person on the, on scheduled on here. This can't get no worse. Come on with it. You want the? I'm sorry. You want the name of the? Yeah, other I want the room? name. Yes. Come on with it. You told me everything else. Okay, I got a a uh, somebody named nephew Tommy. Excuse me. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> Out of here. This is nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Your wife got me to prank phone call you. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to DNA out there. <laughs> the DNA out of This is. <laughs> hey, man. Okay, that's who she's been talking to on the phone. Yep. All right. <laughs> you think yeah was that fun to you or was that stupid that was stupid oh it was stupid. okay then okay then i know some people ain't having this stupid but i apologize no you know what i don't there it is it's stupid at its best yes <sighs> own it I can't. the day i get a voicemail it's something wrong with what i'm doing i can't it, ain't, it wasn't a question Mm-mm. You know he's never going to let this go, guys. You know yeah. he's not. Know Your first on. one. Now you don't even want to do the voicemails right. no more. <laughs> he want to kill the segment. You know? oh, yeah. Next you know, Tommy can't let stuff go. Why is he talking about me? I ain't done nothing to nobody but be stupid. I'm going to be stupid tonight, baby. I'm at Huntsville, Alabama. The nephew was here, stand-up live comedy club. Uh, that's one show tonight, two tomorrow, two on Saturday. That's right, five shows for the weekend. One tonight, two Friday, two Saturday. Stupid has landed in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay? Not fun. Fun has it landed. Stupid has landed. <laughs> stupid, see, stupid yeah. sound more aggressive and got more authority to it. He's a corporate okay? guy, Tommy. Yeah. He's a corporate guy. He, King is Solomon. that what it is? Yeah, he's a corporate guy. You know, he's not <laughs> he in this business. He just felt you marketing yourself. Completely wrong. All them but houses he hurt my and feeling, cars. He hurt hey, Tommy, 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 Tommy. Why? All these houses and cars you done bought. All the damn TV shows you got. This lifestyle you done gave your family. You need to rethink what you doing, man. Yeah. And all hold the success up. you having. All they this here, man. They stupid. They stupid. Yeah, all right, all right, on radio show for all these years and all this here, man. You need you need to rethink yourself, man. Mm. People that like King call in. You got to start listening to people like this who ain't in this business. Okay. <laughs> who ain't hey. never been on stage in front of nobody. You got to pay attention to what these people say, man. <laughs> Them 12 people in that boardroom. How count. dare you act like you're not finna listen to Kane. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject, my grandson's girlfriend jumped me. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter <laughs> live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right hey, now. Hey, Shirley, before yeah, you read Steve. the letter, uh huh, I want to say to a singer out of Detroit named Bobby Storm. Uh-huh, Bobby, Bobby Storm. Storm. Bobby Storm. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. She's a singer out of Detroit. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. This girl ain't no damn joke. Really? My wife sent me a video of this girl singing a song. This mm. girl about her business. Hello, Bobby Storm, Bobby Storm out of Detroit. Detroit. All right. All that talent in Detroit, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here it is, Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, my grandson's girlfriend jumped me. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 68-year-old divorced woman living with my daughter and her 16-year-old son. Well, they're living with me in my house, and I gave my primary bedroom to my daughter upstairs, and I moved to the bedroom downstairs. I wanted for her and my grandson to have their own space because she lost her house during the pandemic and she's saving money to get back on her feet. So in the meantime, I'm running my house as I normally would. 
I pay the bills and I buy the groceries. She's a great cook, so it's a win-win situation. My grandson is expected to do his fair share by keeping his room clean, run errands, do his laundry, and keep his grades up. He's been dating an 18-year-old girl that he met at a basketball game, and she's from the wrong side of the tracks, if you know what I mean. His whole attitude has changed since he met her, and I told his mother to keep an eye on him. She's more relaxed with him than I was with her at that age, so I don't understand it. I told him the girl can't ever be upstairs in my home. I caught her up there several times, so I banned her from coming inside, period. My grandson had her on speakerphone one day, and she said a few cross words about me for not letting her visit. I told him to watch her mouth. I told her to watch her mouth and mind her manners. My grandson was very apologetic. I knew then that he is unable to control this young woman because she has whooped a good one on him. After a few days after that, I caught the girl upstairs in his room again, so I told her to get out. She raised up and threw a pillow and broke my glasses. My grandson had to restrain me because I was about to wear her out. She cursed me out all the way outside. My daughter said she'd handle her, but I want to press charges. Should I do it? Well, of course, I don't think you should press charges. And uh, first, let me say this. I- I'm sorry about your daughter losing her house uh, in the pandemic. A lot of people have gone through that. And I'm sorry, but I'm glad she had a place to go to. And that was your house. That ain't what this letter about, Shirley. Go ahead. But I can okay. still say that. I can still say that because, well, you know, I'm that's not going to say that. So. I know you aren't. <laughs> we know that. I-, I think everyone in this letter is out of line. I think everyone, um, a- except for you, uh, 68-year-old grandmother. While it should be clear, because you've made it crystal clear, it's your house, your rules, they've ignored and disregarded these rules. I place the blame solely on your daughter, because instead of being grateful that she and her son have a place to live during these hard times for her, uh, she's allowing him to disrespect and his girl to disrespect your home. Uh, you, You never said that the girl couldn't come over initially. You just said she couldn't be upstairs in his room. That's fair enough. I mean, this kid's only 16. He's only 16 years old. He can entertain her in the living room. And, and I'm not understanding how something hasn't been done about, about the young lady already. I mean, you've caught her up there several times. This last time, she threw a pillow at you, broke your glasses, and cursed you out all the way outside. Uh, I, I don't think you should press charges, like I said, but I do think it's time for them to go. Um, your daughter needs to get her own place now. I don't think there's any way your daughter should have let that girl get away with that, even if she wasn't there when it happened. Uh, you know, and as long as they live there, the girl will be sneaking in and she's going to be going upstairs. She never stopped. Uh, your daughter said she would handle it. So far, she hasn't. So now I think it's time for you to handle it. And you, you're going to have to, you know, put them out, uh, give her some money to get a new place, whatever you have to do. But they, they need to go. I mean, this can't continue continue because if something could happen where the police might have to be called in. Steve? Well, how much time I got on this first half? <laughs> I got about 90 seconds. So let me explain something to you. This 68-year-old divorced woman that has this house that she says she's living with her daughter and his 16-year-old son but well, they living with me because in my house, then she gave her primary bedroom to her daughter upstairs and I moved to the bedroom downstairs because I wanted her and my grandson to have their own space since she lost her house during the pandemic. And? And? She was being nice. Well, you can Hi. come here, but how, how you getting up in my room? <laughs> And, and all these pandemic house losses stories and all this here, I'll, I'll help you out. But your ass going to be down in this basement. <laughs> I'm not moving out of my room upstairs because I got stuff in there. Don't nobody need to go through these drawers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 68. Girl, I got some stuff in here that's going to require therapy, the explanation of it. Hang on, Steve. (laughs) Hang on, crazy man. Um, We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject for today's Strawberry Letter, my grandson's girlfriend jumped me. 
We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is, my grandson's girlfriend jumped me. That 68-year-old divorced woman, daughter ran into some hard times during the pandemic, understood. She let her daughter move in with her 16-year-old son. She gave them their bedroom upstairs so she, so they could have their own space. Own oh, space, my ass. You lost your house during the pandemic. I'm not finna inconvenience myself. Y'all can come over here, but know this. Your ass is on the bottom floor. I'm on the top because this is my house. I ain't that damn friend. Anyway, she let the baby and her uh, daughter and her son stay there. She's saving money till she get on her feet. In the meantime, Grandmama say she run her house like she normally do. She pay all the bills and buy the groceries and everything. And your grandson is expected to do his part. Just keep your room clean and keep your grades up. That's all. That ain't no damn responsibility. Now, he been dating this 18-year-old girl. Now, he's 16 now. He been dating this 18-year-old girl that he met at a basketball game. And she from the wrong side of the tracks, if you know what I mean. That means they live out in the suburbs and she from the hood. That's what that means. All right, cool. And his whole attitude has changed. Grandma, it had to. He's 16. She 18 from the hood. He got to change his attitude. Because he's trying to fit in so he can hold on to this thing. And this thing is doing some things to your grandson that he ain't never had happen before. And it's happening at your house. That's why they can't stay from upstairs. Because it's going down upstairs. Now, his whole attitude has changed since he met her. And I told his mother, keep an eye on him. Well, you probably did. She's a lot more lenient with him than you were with her, and you don't understand that. Well, you got to tighten the reins on the boy. An undisciplined boy leads to a few things. He's going to be a father early. He's going to go to jail. Or he's going to get shot. So now, he's already on his way to being a daddy. He's already on his way because they upstairs. I told him that the girl can't be ever be upstairs in my home. I done caught her up there several times. So this is more than once. You done caught her up there several times. So I banned her from, from coming inside, period. Now, I want you to say something about your grandson. He can't help it. He can't help it. Because what's happening to him upstairs is way more beneficial to him than this cussing out for her being upstairs. We're going to take the chances of upsetting Grandma because what's happening upstairs, Grandma, is, is popping off. Now, I told you not to let their ragged ass in your house upstairs. Should have had them down in the basement. They all up in stairs, up in your room, just clowning. So anyway, uh... You told her she couldn't come over to the house, period. So you banned her from coming inside. Your grandson had on speakerphone one day, and she said a few crosswords about me for not letting her visit. I told her to watch her mouth and mind her manners. My grandson was very apologetic. Oh, my grandma, I'm so sorry. I don't know why she tripping like that. But your grandson can't do nothing about this because it's some things happening to your grandson, I'm telling you. That you, that you don't provide for. Now, I know you're cleaning the house and paying these bills and buying these groceries, but the real groceries is popping off upstairs. And her groceries is better than your groceries. <laughs> That's what this is. Said. This is about groceries. I knew he was unable to control this young woman because she has whooped a good one on him. Girl, you have no idea. A few days after that, I caught the girl upstairs in the room again. So I told her to get out. She raised up and threw a pillar and broke my glasses. My grandson had to restrain me because I was about to wear her out. Now, you must really be from the other side of the track because how he restrained you, I don't know. Because I know if I ever had grabbed my grandmama, these words would immediately came out of her mouth. Take your punk ass hands off me. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right there. And I can't grab my grandmama. I just, I can't grab my, I really can't. I can't. I just can't. No, no. So you should have whooped her ass right there in your house. She cussed me out all the way outside. My daughter said she'd handle it, but I want to press charges, should I? Press charges? Yeah, this ain't a press charge issue. You got to teach her ass some manners. Now, obviously, I'm just, maybe you just got this one daughter. I don't know if you got any sons anywhere. 
but I'm and but I know you got some brothers and sisters. Where is your nieces? You got to get some nieces involved in here. You got to get equal opportunity ass whooper. See, let me explain something to you. I had a minor one time that was shooting off his mouth at me. And I wanted to knock his ass out. But I knew I would lose everything I had. So what did I do? I went and got the minors in my family who have nothing. Who have nothing. Then I paid them something. <laughs> so they would have something. Okay. Yeah. I ain't had no more problems out this little boy. No more problems. Because they warmed his ass. This young girl been firing off at her mouth, being managed, not being respectful, and she need to be taught some respect. Tell your nieces about this and let them go talk to her as a group. As, as a, a group. group. Yeah. It's always group ass whoopers is very effective. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. That's Steve. my response to this letter. Should I press charges? Hell no. No. All right. Thank you, Steve. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. They're coming up at 46 minutes after the hour. It's Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Okay, for first shirt, I just got to remind King Solomon, April 1st, I'm going to be acting a fool and stupid <laughs> down in Dallas, Texas at the Texas Trust Theater. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. Earthquake, Bruce Bruce, Bill Bellamy, myself, Ryan Davis, and Shantae Wayans will all be acting stupid up in that theater. All right, here it is. Listen, I cannot report on this because I have sickle cell and it's too cold for me to watch. Yeah. So I, I cannot give you an Olympic update because I'm scared I might go into a crisis. But none other than my Uncle Steve yeah. does have an Olympic report for you about what's going on over in China. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. here is your Olympic report. This Olympic report is brought to you by the Sickle Cell Foundation, where we are raising money so that we will all be able to enjoy the Winter Olympics one day safely and free from crisis. So that's being brought to you by Sickle Cell Foundation, drawing awareness to this horrible, horrible disease. All right, let's get it started right now. Well, the white people was back out in full force last night. White <laughs> snow and white people everywhere. Everywhere. Now, last night, I want to thank uh, Lindsay Jacob, the white girl from uh, United States. She won a gold medal last night. Yeah. These are far yeah. and few between for us with the gold medal. She won it in cross. Cross snowboard skiing is when they race against each other around the track. It was five okay. finals in there, five white girls was in this here. Not now black girl was in this at all. Yeah. All five cute little white girls yeah. and the girl wanted uh, the gold medal last night. Curly, once again, I don't know why we can't get a damn medal in curling because it's under the whole concept that America was built. Some people is already in this circle. You throw your rock in there, knock their ass out the circle, and then claim it as your circle. Why these white folks in the United States ain't winning this is beyond me. Stay woke. But they Stay don't woke. get their ass just yanked in the curling yeah. competition. They can't whip nobody. Now, okay. like I said, congratulations to Jacobolis, uh, the white Who? girl that won. The, I don't, can't say these. don't worry, hey, you don't hear about these people, but every four years. <laughs> don't you ain't got to remember their names unless they ask get on that Wheaty box. And we do not put snowboard people on the Wheaty box. Another okay. white boy won a silver medal from okay. the United States. Yay. Okay. After that, then we ain't got nothing to talk about because in the luge, you know, where you stay on the sled by yourself. Uh -huh. Yeah. White folks was just wiping out on that hill last night. <laughs> Turn number 13 was whooping their ass. Yeah. Thanks, Junior, with your special guest, Steve Harvey, Thank with you. the Thank Olympic you. report for today. <laughs> we'll be back <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here is a question from a listener named Mike. Uh, hey, morning crew. My name is Mike, and I'm a longtime loyal listener to your show and need you 
To help me figure out something my girlfriend said to me this morning, check this out. We've been together for two years, and this year, when I asked her what she wanted to do for Valentine's Day, she said she didn't really care, and I didn't need to make a big deal out of it. Now, does that mean that we've been together long enough that she doesn't feel like she needs to be wined and dined? Or is this her way of testing me to see if I go all out anyway so she knows I still care? Oh, and the way she said it to me kind of threw me into something because usually she always wants to do something special and has tons of ideas. And does this mean she's not feeling the relationship right now? Hmm. Well, you got two problems, though. You got two problems. Number one, assume that it's a test. (laughs) Assume. Assume that it's a test. Secondly... Maybe all these ideas and stuff that she normally come up with, maybe she tired of doing that. She won't see what you gonna do. So I would consider it a test. If she's not feeling the relationship anymore, you will know mm, in about five, six days. You gonna know. But you gonna have you're gonna have to put a little you're gonna invest a little bit of time and a little bit of thought and a little bit of money to find out if you still have the relationship you want. But it is a test, though, brother. Do not fail the test. Because this, when she said it to you, you say it threw you into something, they do that. that they, I ain't nobody better at that in this world than women. Saying <laughs> something to throw you into something. Yeah. They Don't are every woman experts do at it. Right. What would you mm. say, Tommy? Don't every woman want to do something for Valentine's? I mean, Everybody yeah. wants to feel like that somebody, the significant other in their life would treat yeah. them special. Special, yeah, that's what I was uh, On that day, and don't you think they don't? So, yeah, right. yeah. I got to get to doing something. You got <laughs> to get to doing something. Mike better right. not wake up like it's just Monday. I'll tell you what he <laughs> better not do. I bet he better not wake up talking about that damn Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl over Sunday night, pimp. Hey, all eyes on me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is something but no not. pressure, no pressure. <laughs> well, give him some suggestions. What do you think, Steve? I mean, you know, I don't really Within know him. Budget. I don't even know how old he is. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know where they live. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know. I, I would think they're a young couple. Been together Been for together two, two years. years. Yeah. yeah. You got to be thoughtful, dog. I always tell young guys this. If you want to know where the phrase is the thought that counts, mm-hmm. that came from women. The more thoughtful you can make your idea, the more special it becomes. You have to do stuff that require the fact that you put some thought into it. Because women love being thought of. And nothing shows them that they're special more than when you make them feel thought of. Hmm. Buying a card and a box of chocolates, that ain't no damn thought, dog. That's I thought of you. You could have bought three boxes of chocolates in the same damn card. I've done that. I've done that. You've Don't done do that. that. Don't do that. Uh, learn from your mistakes. <laughs> Don't do that. Because, like, right now, especially with social media, it can be too much cross-referencing. Mm. Yeah. What? If, those Whitman chocolates? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Your envelope was pink with white ink writing on it? Yeah, they, they can cross-reference you. Don't buy the same thing, dog. One eight hundred flowers, also a very good gift. One eight hundred flowers dot com. I'm just saying, fresh, beautiful. They last a long time. One eight hundred flowers. Hey, nice. Exactly. The only one in the office ain't getting that. <laughs> and make a public display of affection. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm, oh, yeah. Send them to the office. Always the winner. You got to send them to the office. Always the winner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the office at home now. Office so, we, so what we do now? You work from home. What we send these flowers to? Mm. The house, the and house. she could put them on Just Zoom. To the house. <laughs> put them in the camera on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here's our girl Carla with some music news. What you got, Carla? Well, you know, the countdown is on. Thank you, Shirley. (laughs) The countdown is on halftime Super Bowl 56. We are all so excited to see Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, 
Kendrick Lamar, Mary J. Blige is going down. Snoop said it is going to be a spectacular show, but he said he hasn't decided yet if they are going to perform Gin and Juice. <laughs> Why not? Come on, Snoop. You got to perform that. What? what? <laughs> yeah, so it it'll be interesting. They all have so many With hits. So many How are they going to get the all LBC. that in? What'd you say, uh, Junior? With so much drama in the LBC. In the LBC. Come on, yeah. Snoop. We got to yes. do this. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. So that's cool. We are waiting for that. The Super Bowl gospel concert, the show, has been announced. Uh, the lineup, it'll be hosted by Sarah Jakes Roberts. You know, that's T.D. Jake, Bishop T.D. Jakes' oh. daughter. She will be okay. hosting, starring Regina Bell, gospel artist Lecrae, CeeLo Green. So that's going to be star-studded. C.C. Winans, that's going down this weekend. A lot of music events happening this weekend. and also Can't do the it first... without a wine, it's called. You got to have one wine. Wine At the gospel it. It ain't concert, work if you ain't got yeah. a wine in it. Okay, yeah. and then quickly that versus battle I told you about Anthony Hamilton versus Music Soul Child that's going down Tuesday, Tuesday, oh. February fourteenth. Oh. So get ready for that. A lot of music stuff happening this weekend, and that's music news. All right, All right. thank you, Carla. Coming up next, we'll do a round of Would You Rather. Coming up at thirty-three minutes after the hour. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Would You Rather. Uh, first one, would you rather lose your sense of feeling during sex or would you rather lose your sense of taste during sex? I'm, I'm going to go with taste. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to follow him with that taste. Uh-huh. I can't lose the yeah. feeling. Now. Feeling? <laughs> lose mm-hmm. your taste? What What, mm-hmm. what the hell? What, lose your taste? <laughs> what yeah. flavors what you hell? looking for? <laughs> I mean, don't, what, 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 what taste? I'm just saying. What the hell going on? I'm going to lose my taste. So I'm feeling? just saying. He's feeling. I ain't going to lose the feeling. feeling. Okay. You want the feeling, huh? Lose you know, your flavor. Feel. Your taste. Ain't no what? apples in here. Oh. Okay. You, ain't got, you ain't got to use that lotion no more. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm Would still going to put this honey all over you, though. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I ain't got to taste a damn thing. Okay. It's too much. Uh-huh. Yeah. It ain't the hey. taste I'm after no damn way. It's the right. effect. It's Shirley's question. You know, <laughs> care about this uh-uh. chocolate. <laughs> nope. All right, would you rather go on the show 60 days in or dating naked? Which one? Oh, no. Come on, go to jail? Uh, that's one about oh, going no. to jail. Oh, no. I'm dating naked. Be sitting up oh. their ass naked. <laughs> with, so with, with, with my legs crossed with glass <laughs> yeah. of wine in my hands exactly. rolling a cigar with not ass dropping in my lap we're not going up in this jail for no 60 damn yeah. days yeah. no not yeah. me you're gonna see my ass building his a, you're gonna see me Man, building a hut dropping ashes on my stomach and stuff damn Steve built bad yep yeah. Yeah. yep but I'm free I'm free right? oh, that's, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Would you rather walk to the mailbox naked, or would you rather wear a Texans helmet to church? Oh, I'm that mailbox, to the mailbox is a shop walk. Oh, going, that's yeah. not naked. Wearing a naked Texans though. helmet to church, man. What? But Texas, and they from that's Houston. That's where you're from. Yeah, you're from I, Texas. I'm going naked. You saw our yeah. record. We four and thirteen. What the hell? I'm representing. But this naked. Steve. I done. I done been to the mailbox naked before. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was at night. When? I hope it was at night. <laughs> no, you can't see my mailbox. No way. So you just oh, said, no. let me check the mail real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to get into that. This is, yeah. no, not, Let's what's the other on. option? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather live in a mega yacht for one year or in a penthouse in Vegas? Vegas. 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 I ain't fooling with that water, y'all. I'm Vegas. not doing it. Man, <laughs> oh, y'all. Steve has an answer yet. Why am I Vegas. Y'all don't and you're know. out on a yacht. That's ass mess, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'm on the yacht. So you're on the yacht. Really? For a year. Uh, yeah, because you can dog. Let me tell you something. Just put me in the Mediterranean. I can go I can go to Monte Carlo and gamble. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Junior on the strip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I can do that penthouse in Vegas too, though, baby. Yeah. All right, that does it for today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up next at 49 minutes after, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey at our last break of the day, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Here we are, guys. Our last break of the day on this Thursday. One more yeah. day before Friday. Yeah. 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 Big Good weekend. Day, day. Good, yeah, man. it's a weekend. Ooh, big weekend. Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Valentine's yeah. Day. All that. Now, fellas, listen to me. Hmm? Don't let this Super Bowl <laughs> be bigger than Valentine's Day. I'm telling okay. you, they're going to pay attention. Yeah. They're going to pay attention to the time and effort you put into the Super Bowl game versus the time and effort that you're going to put into Valentine's Day. Don't let the Super Bowl party be bigger, better, more expensive than the Valentine's Day dinner. Listen to me. I know you're stupid. And I know <laughs> you're thinking, well, hold on, man. I got eight people over here. How our dinner going to cost more than these eight people? I don't give a damn. Make it. Put forth some extra thought into Valentine's Day because it is the day after the Super Bowl. The day after the Super Bowl is one of the biggest conversations in sports. Don't let that occupy your Valentine's Day if you have a Valentine. Now, if you single, you can stand there and talk all you want to. If you on TV like Stephen A. Smith, his job is that, you can do that. But if that ain't your job, don't make it your job. Uncle Steve is warning you, fellas, this is a dangerous weekend because these women are looking at Valentine's Day harder than they looking at that damn Super Bowl. Thank you. And now let me <laughs> forewarn you of this. Facts. <laughs> Do not combine Ooh. your Valentine's Day with the Super Bowl mm. event. <laughs> because I know men, I know how we think. Do not work a way in there to combine that. We just gonna cook our baby here at Dog, the house yeah. on Sunday. This can't be her birthday <laughs> and her Valentine's Day and Super Bowl all in one. Okay, you and Tommy and Junior do a scenario of what that might look like, so we'll know. What for you sure. mean? You know, okay, like well. the combining okay. the two. Here he, go an idea. He the you you can't one. yell for the Rams and then turn around Monday and say, I love you. <laughs> See, whisper barely a yeah. whisper you were screaming for the rams yesterday <laughs> yes. then you yeah. come over here monday I, I love you so much <laughs> had that what same you energy had you, that same yeah. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. you, you can't throw it. you can't throw a barbecue cookout for the game uh-huh. mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. throw a couple steaks on and put them aside for monday <laughs> and say baby <laughs> this here mm-hmm. this for our dinner right here when we do uh-huh. our thing mm-hmm. i got this some i got that yeah, yeah, throw it and then yeah, put, put a couple microwave. pieces of candy on the side and say, you know, baby, happy Valentine. Here we go. <laughs> <That don't work. laughs> Let me just stay yeah. right there because okay. it's mm-hmm. stupid has levels to it. Mm-hmm. You cannot save the leftover food from the Super Bowl. Yes. Reheat it up. Oh, plate what? it for your Valentine's dinner. In the microwave? Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Just... Some wings? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nachos? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you uh-uh, how dudes do think. Oh, we're breaking I'm telling up. you how dudes think. So, we're fellas, this closing remark is a yeah. warning as to <laughs> what to be aware of and don't make the fatal mistake because right now you got a lot of planning going into this Super Bowl thing. You and you're not paying attention that the next day is Valentine's Day. And they're going to want the same, if not more, preparation into their day. Yeah. Here's another one. Come on, Your yellow. blessing is that Valentine's Day is a Monday after the Super Bowl, and it's not a national holiday. So she has to go to work. The show is open. This <laughs> will give you extra time. To get all the Super Bowl conversation out during the day, first take, Jalen and Jacoby, <laughs> Keyshawn, get all that out while she at work. Get your apps, get your conversation. It also gives you time to make that after that evening more special. Now, you're going to be tired from the Super Bowl party. Mm-hmm. Get you some five-hour energy shots and some espressos and take them. And a okay. B12 if you need it. So your ass is, listen to me, 
B12 don't do a damn bit of good <laughs> right away. You got to get five-hour energy shots. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Immediately coherent. Extra okay. strength right now. Two of them. Get them in your system. So you can be up and energetic. So you got to have some of that energy from the game. And you've got to make Valentine's Day special. Regardless never as thought, to how much effort you put. Go ahead. I never thought it was a good idea for both of these to be that close. I never thought. It. It's it not. Matter. It is now. And the NFL, man, we're going to have to talk with them next year. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> usually Super Bowl is around the first weekend in February. This yeah. this they was moved a fatal it. mistake because they didn't added that game on to the yeah. season. See. So now we down here. With that dinner in the microwave, though. Yeah. Uh, don't yeah. Please don't do that. But you know, plate it though. Plate it so you know. <laughs> Great advice to the family. Let's go home, big dog. I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, listen, everybody. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, God willing. And uh, in the meantime, talk to God because he'd love to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 